Yep, turbo, turbo lag, torque steer, wheel spin. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome to Petroped. And welcome to a Mark 1 Golf GTI with 240 horsepower and a really interesting story to tell. Woohoo! So where do I start with the car behind me? Well, let's start off with a little bit of history. So in May 1974, VW introduced the Golf, a front-engined petrol car to replace the Beetle. And just two years later, in their ultimate wisdom, they decided to put a fuel-injected 1.6-litre engine in, and they invented a three-letter acronym, GTI. And that, my friends, changed the motoring world forever. The hot hatch was born, the Mark I Golf GTI. And do you know what? I've never driven one. That is until today, because a very cool subscriber called Tim got in touch and said, Ped, I've got a really cool car I think you need to come and have a look at. I think you need to come and drive it. So let me tell you a little bit more about the car behind me, because it's not all as it appears by quite a long stretch, actually. When you think about it, it was a simple concept, really. You take a small, lightweight hatchback, you give it a more powerful, sporty engine, a little bit of sporty styling, and voila, you have a GTI. A hot hatch, this is where hot hatches started. This car inspired other manufacturers to go down the same route and bring us some of the best cars that we can think of. It inspired a whole generation of boy racers. This is where it started, the Golf GTI. Now, this particular car is a 1983 Mark I Golf. Now, 1983 was when the Mark II Golf came out, so this is the very last of the Mark Ones. But those Golf GTI aficionados may start to look at this car and think something's going on. It's not quite right, and you'd be right, because this technically isn't a Golf GTI. It's a bit of a hybrid of things, actually but it's fascinating and very, very cool. So let me start to talk you around the car. First things first, it's had a beautiful restoration. So bare metal respray, the bodywork is absolutely in immaculate condition. It really is something special. But I think we need to start off by having a look underneath the bonnet because as soon as you lift the bonnet, you realize that all is, all is well in the world. There are some crazy people out there because this ain't no normal Mark 1 Golf GTI, no. It's much better than that. Voila. A 1.8 20 valve turbo out of a Mark V Golf GTI. How cool is that? I mean, come on. Yeah. So that's going to give the car an awful lot more power than it had as stock. Um, it's going to have very, very different driving characteristics. By all account, this car does have a little bit of torque steer, <laughs> as you would expect but it's packaged and fits in there really, really well. So that's the engine. The gearbox is also out of a Mark V um, GTI. So engine and gearbox, Mark V Golf GTI. You've got to keep count on all the different types of donor cars because it's quite important. Let's wander around the back. Oh, by the way, while we're going there, um, in here are the front rotors and calipers off of a VR6 Golf. <laughs> So those are so big that, that unfortunately, they really wanted to fit um, the standard alloys on here, but they just weren't big enough to fit the calipers and the brake discs. So um, these are still uh, genuine VW AGT. Uh, they're 15 inch alloys. So we've got uh, 19550 R15s on the front. Um, it just gives the car a really nice squat stance. It sat a little bit lower than standard as well. Let's have a wander around the back and then, then we've got to have a look on the interior. Do you know, the more I look at this car, the more I remember how much I like them. I think back in the day, I was probably more of a, a kind of 205 GTI, Renault 5 GT Turbo, definitely Mark 1, 1.3 Supersport. I know that wasn't really a hot hatch. The XR2 was the hot hatch, but I always loved the Fiesta Supersport. But this, I just, it's just so retro and so cool. And it's been done so well. I just love the rear view of this car. And look at that, a proper, proper exhaust. It's just kind of like bringing me back to my teenage years and watching these cars drive around when I was a kid. 
Let's have a look at the interior because I think the interior has been done beautifully. And there's a gadget on the interior that I haven't seen in a car. In fact, I can't remember the last time I had one. I'd even forgotten it existed until I saw it when I looked in this car this morning and I went, oh my days, that's how we used to do things. Let's jump inside and I'll show you what I mean. It's lovely in here. Now the non-standard theme continues on the inside. So, so far we've got a Mark V gearbox and engine and a Mark V interior. So yes, this is the interior from a Mark V Golf GTI. And they, I can't believe they fit in here. It's amazing. There's not a great deal of room in the back for passengers and especially if they've got legs, but I don't care about that because I never sit in the back. And then the front, <laughs> that dash, that is a modern dash. That's not from a Mark 1 Golf GTI. This is actually the dash from a modern day Polo. And that actually just goes to show how much these cars have grown because a modern day Polo, which is the baby VW, the dash now fits in the original Golf. <laughs> I don't know how they've got that to fit. It's an absolute marvel. But what that means is you get some extra bits of technology. We've got a Kenwood head unit there with Apple CarPlay. And also normally you'd probably have like windy windows. Remember that? Now we've got electric windows. But the gadget that I haven't seen in a car for a very long time I was mentioning before is up here. I have a winding handle for the sunroof. <laughs> I haven't done one of these. I haven't seen that for years. That's For the youngsters watching, this is how we used to open sunroofs, by the way, with a winding handle and then you tuck it away like that. I haven't seen one of those for years and it's a really, really smooth mechanism. I mean, nowadays we've got these big glass panoramic roofs. Look at the size of this thing. It's only about a foot wide, but that that's proper retro and I absolutely love that. But the retro theme continues when you start the car. We're going to go for a drive in a moment. Let me just turn the immobilizer off. Start the car because I mean, it, it sounds amazing. But as soon as this Kenwood head unit boots up, out of the wing comes an electrically operated aerial or antenna for the radio. There it goes. <laughs> and again, I haven't seen one of those for years. Nowadays, all the antennas are integrated into the into the windows and stuff. But you know, again, back in the day, I had one of those on my first car, I had one of those. I just thought it was the height of cool, the height of luxury. It was the best optional extra ever because if you didn't have one and you left the car parked with the antenna up, you bet, bet when you get back to the car, someone had snapped it off or you know, you used to leave them up and go through a car wash and they get ripped off and you'd end up driving around with a coat hanger sticking out the side of the car. So that, back in the day, that was like amazing technology. Now it's just, that's retro cool. But yeah, in here, I, I can't wait to drive this car. I just think it's been done really, really well. And I know some of you are gonna be going, oh yeah, but it's not a Mark 1 Golf GTI. We know that, <laughs> we know that it's really, really cool. I must drive an original Mark 1 Golf GTI one day. But this, just in terms of, of the way it's been done and the quality of the work, apparently everything in here is original Golf or, or VW bits. Um, so there's no kind of aftermarket stuff. It's all original VW. And you can kind of tell it just has this really kind of um, well put together feeling. But let's get some cameras set up and go for a drive because I think this car is going to be an absolute riot. Okay, out and about on the road. I've literally just driven from Tim's house. He lives very close to some familiar roads, if you've seen any of the films that I've done with Anthony James' cars. Um, basically, we're gonna use that route because it's a lovely bit of road. So, first impressions of the car, I'm gonna try and talk you through things. It's it's a, not the best driving position for me. My arms are a bit outstretched. There's no kind of tilt and reach adjustment on the steering wheel. Um, I've got the window cracked open just a little bit. One, you can hear some turbo noises. And there is also the fuel pumps making a little bit of a noise. Tim's aware of that, he just needs to get that sorted. Now, Tim bought the car uh, on an online auction site, so didn't do any of the work. So I might be being a little vague in some areas of the car. Um, in terms of engine power, well... Oh! <laughs> Uh, it's it's very very uh, turboy. <laughs> it's got a huge amount of boost. So the car's not been dynoed. We think it's running somewhere in the region of 240 to 250 horsepower. And if you think the original Golf GTI had about 110, I think or 113. So it's 
it's quite a lot up on that and it's really torque steering it does track and ride the road a little bit the suspension setup is pretty firm but it just feels like a go-kart I mean it, it really is a ridiculous thing and I've only had because this is the first bit of open road I've got to I've only had a couple of pulls from low down um, just to kind of feel the, the power come in and so on brakes are pretty good um, I'm glad it's got upgraded brakes at the front let me just kind of come down a little bit lower and, and just have a pull from let's say second just to have a feel here we go Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's wheel spinning lots of wheel spinning third <laughs> oh my god this thing's ridiculous I mean seriously <laughs> seriously ridiculous but I guess the, the design ethos behind this car is basically what would a Mark 1 Golf GTI be like today if it was built today um, but yeah you know the the, the the limitations to what you could do weren't nearly as great back then as they are now so you know what would happen if you gave the car you know over a hundred more horsepower I've got to do another acceleration because that's just hysterical here we go from second turbos kicked in yeah and that's the <laughs> wheels fit in third yeah <laughs> oh boy now I thought that little mini, the electric mini I had on the channel recently, that, that, I mean that, I don't think I'll drive a car ever with more torque steer than that. This is quite close though, it's quite close. It's just that you can hear the turbo spooling up. And again, apparently Tim's just had a little bit of work done on that because it was so massively boosty before, it kind of turboed or the, it spooled up and then dumped all its power through the front wheels and it was almost undrivable this is far more linear in terms of how it's coming in but it is it's it's linear for a turbo it's still got a lot of turbo like this thing there's there's kind of nothing and then everything <laughs> but it's magnificent the other thing that's really cool I've got Apple CarPlay which is fantastic so that's been very useful trying to get out of Tim's house and finding his house on the way back is going to be really useful get me Google Maps on the go um, yeah and then just in terms of the, the these seats are great the, the it's just such a cool car because from the outside unless you really know your Golf GTIs from the outside you're just going to look at this and go oh look Mark 1 Golf GTI that's cool as and then and then it just lifts its skirt and you kind of see all the goodies underneath and it's very very naughty <laughs> what I love about this car is I literally just stopped in a car park back there to change some cameras around and straight away this guy came over and oh mate what car is that original I was like um, not really <laughs> He said, what engine's it got? I said, um, it's got 240 horsepower, Mark 5 20 valve turbo. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, can have a look. The next thing, bonnet's open. And I think for me, that's that's what you get when you buy a car like this. You know, or, I mean, clearly you could, you could build a car like this for yourself if you had the mechanical skill. But, you know, if you want to jump straight in and you, you buy a car like this has already been done and been done very, very well, you've got you know you can take it to shows you can you know you have that you know you're driving around people let you out in this car they wave they you know people of my age now Tim the owner and myself we are the same age we're literally three weeks apart in terms of age we both turned 50 this year but but because of that this this is a car of our vintage you know when it reminds us of our younger days and I think that for me that's what I love about this car so much but oh boy <laughs> Is this car good when you put that kind of horsepower in it? Let's put this to the test up Berry Hill. Oh my days, this car's got some major torque steer and wheel spin issues. But it does go round the bends really nicely. This is one of my favourite hills to cycle up, by the way. Berry Hill. It's got a nice two-lane dual carriageway going up it. Oh man, this car tracks like nothing else. <laughs> you have to be on your A game driving this, that's for sure. 
the gearbox is fine. The, the change from fifth to fourth, it, you have to be very precise with it. Otherwise it kind of leaves you hanging in no man's land. But it, these cars were, were known for their handling, their agility. And you get a sense within this car that it's, it's a very chuckable car. One thing that the, the steering rack's quite long on it. So I think quite a lot of modern day cars have very short steering racks. And that means that when you put an input into the steering wheel, things happen very, very quickly. This is much more lazy and labored. So you, you really do have to make quite concerted efforts to kind of steer the car into corners. So it would be nice, I'd probably, if it were mine, maybe look at just shortening that steering rack a little bit. There we go, there's that fifth to fourth just takes a little bit of practice. Fourth to third is, is good. And then there we go, look, I've got to really, really hang on to that. And then round this corner, oh, it's got loads of grip actually. Oh my God, this thing's wicked. You want to change gear about, about five and a half? It just tends to peter out a little bit at the top end. There we go, I'm stuck in fourth again, yeah. Um, so again, very little seat time in the car. I'd need to kind of get used to it, but this bit of road, look at that view. What a day, what a car. <laughs> I hate my job sometimes, you know. I really, really do. Suspension's pretty firm. You can kind of see me just bouncing around a bit. I think, you know, it, on a track, oh my God, this car on a track would be hilarious because you'd rock up to a track day and everyone go, well, you know, go TTI, hats off to you, well done, you know, nice car. And then you go on track and you'd absolutely destroy everybody. Oh, what a thing. What a thing. <laughs> it, it's one of those cars that you, if you drive this car and don't have a moronic grin on your face for the entire duration of your drive and probably for about four hours afterwards, there's something clinically wrong with you, basically. Because this car... This car's just fantastic. It's been done so well. And I, I totally get it now, this, what would a Mark 1 Golf GTI be like if it was built today? <laughs> it's great. It's got the power it always wanted. A purist, and I know that the, the, the big challenge here is I'm tapping into some VW stuff. I've done very little VW stuff on the channel before. I've driven a Golf R on the channel with my mate Hampshire, Photo Hampshire Photography, that's about it. So I haven't done that many VWs, so I, I kind of am opening myself up to a barrage of, of, uh, of criticism and, and horrible comments because of my lack of knowledge of, of Mark 1 Golf GTIs. And I know, and I, I'm gonna say this now, if you're a purist, this car is probably, you know, it's a complete bastardization of a Mark 1 Golf, but it's so cool. It's just so cool, and I love the ethos of it. If you're a purist, go out, get yourself a mint, Mark 1 Golf GTI, I must drive one of those one day, just to, just to feel like you know, what they're like. But this, I love it, I absolutely love it. Yeah, and, and so um, I have to say a massive thank you to Tim, the owner, um, who reached out to me quite a while ago now, and we've kind of been talking about, he's got a number of really cool cars that I'm hopefully gonna come to bring to the channel. Um, he's, got a, he's just got brilliant tasting cars, and I think it's probably to do with the fact we are the same age, so all the cars he thinks are really cool, are all the cars I think are really cool and he's got some absolute gems so I'm hoping we'll do more together um, and, and he'll let me drive a few more of his cars but I had to start with this one he sent me a picture of it and oh Golf GTI and he was like eh, it's got a little bit more to it than that it certainly has so yeah I absolutely love it please let me know what you think of this car I just think it's absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant um, but if you've enjoyed this one give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already Please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And if you like this kind of content, different cars, different types of, you know, especially the sort of modified engines, different engines, different interiors, I, I find them fascinating. I love the, the thinking and the thought process behind them. And then the engineering to physically get them built. I, I, I just, I'd love to know how they got this dashboard in here. I'd love to know how, how difficult it was to make this interior fit. I'd love to know exactly how they shoehorn that engine up front. It's just a brilliant bit of engineering. Anyway, for now, I'll uh, love you and leave you, and I'll see you on the next film. You take care, guys. Drive safe.